some of this wonderful. <laughs> this is an interview with Lois Gibson at North Campus, April 14th, 1989. And Lois is showing me some clippings from um, her past honors, uh, Eve Award, and the pinning and capping ceremony in 1977. And now there's a wonderful color photo. What's that? What's that color photo about, Lois? Okay. I was asked to. I'm gonna take notes in case that machine. Is, is it okay? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I was asked to speak at the Eartha M. White Awards Banquet in 1987 at the Sheraton St. John place. This banquet is given on an annual basis and what they're trying to do is raise funds for the Eartha M. and White uh, nursing home. And there's some history behind Miss White and you may have gotten that from someone else. Mm -hmm. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, she's, she was one of the prominent black leaders in providing for the homeless, for minorities, and also for uh, basic care of minorities in the convalescent center and a boys, it was a boys home. Put that down there and I'll call you and give you, um, correct that statement because I'm not sure that it was a boys home of, uh, youth services. I don't remember what it was, but she, she really was uh, one of the, the oldest members of this community um, who did indeed give this service for the homeless and for the boys. And I have to get the correct title there. And I was asked if I would speak convalescent at care. Convalescent care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At that banquet um, representing Florida Community College and I did. And the aged too. Huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. then this picture includes a very prominent person in the community, Kevin Lofton, and you may have heard of him. Yeah. He is the vice president of Univers University Hospital. How do you spell his last name? L-O-F-T-O-N. L-O-F-T-O-N. Kevin Lofton. L-O-F-T-O-N. Uh, T-O-N, okay. And his, what is his title? He's at University He's Hospital. He's at University Hospital, and he's one of the vice presidents, and I, again, would have to get his specific title. He's second in command. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Andre Gray is, is the president of the White House. Uh-huh. And who's, who's this man? That, um, Mr. Lockley, and he's with the Sheriff Department, and I'd have to get his title. <laughs> How do you spell his last name? L O C K L E Y. I can get that information to get it back. Okay. Well, okay. Lois, can you kind of go into your background here at the college? How'd you, how'd you start out uh, your various promotions? And I heard a wonderful thing about your connection to this building. And uh, we need to kind of go into that before we leave today. Can you kind of go through those? Okay, and this is, I, I don't know if this is um, accurate, but I'm going to say it, and, and I don't know that it really means that much, but um, I was working with Stanton Vocational High School with the practical nursing program in the early 60s, I believe, 63. 63, 65, and if you recall, the vocational schools were uh, amalgamated or combined with Florida Junior College some years back. There was some kind of agreement that this would happen, and standard vocational, <clears throat> excuse me, phased out or phased into LCCJ in 1965-66. And I was asked at that time uh, to apply for a full-time position with LCCJ. And I had made a commitment to the principal at Stanton, Ben Durham, to stay on another year. So I would not agree to apply um, as an initial faculty member for LCCJ. However, when we were transferred out, uh, 
we were asked to look at a curriculum for an initial nursing program at FCCJ because the person that they were going to hire as the director of that program was in North Carolina and would not be in this area for another year. So I agreed as one of the faculty members uh, with the vocational program to review some of the information for the curriculum at, at this institution. And uh, of course, so that made me truly a part of the initial uh, structure of a program for a nurse, for nursing at SDCJ. You reviewed it, but you were still part of Stanton? I was still part of Stanton then. Mm -hmm. And they asked us to do that so that um, we could have some input when this director did indeed come into the Jacksonville area. Joan Royce was my supervisor at that time. And of course, being on Cumberland campus, because it was Cumberland campus at that time, as a part, still a part of Duval County uh, school system, they moved us out to, to Cumberland campus. And I guess the transition took place while we were on Cumberland campus, but yet we were still a part of Stanford Vocational. And I don't know exactly how that transition took place, but um, uh, I do recall that it was probably in 1960. 66 when that took place, 65, 66. So you were, were you charter faculty with FJC or not? Or you were still? See, I don't know how they considered that because see, I was uh -huh. with, um, I was with Stanton Vocational. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and then the next year, I applied for a position with FCCJ. Well, actually it was the same year. Um, That's 66? Yeah, so I was hired in, in 66 as a full-time faculty for FCCJ nursing program, RN program. See, during the time I was at Stanton, I was with the LPN program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was told, and here again, like I said, I, I couldn't prove this, that I was the first full-time uh, minority faculty member hired at this institution. I, and I, you know, we'd have to check the records on that. But at the time, there was only one full-time minority counselor with the program, and I think Roseanne Hartwell would probably be the person who could really verify that. You were the first full-time minority faculty member? Uh, see, when we, were, when, we, when we transferred from, from uh, Duval County Public Schools into LCCJ, um, we didn't come in, see, we came in as transfer staff members, but I, I didn't really transfer because I applied for that position. So what happened, they hired me as a full-time person. So mm -hmm. in the process of the transfer, I just slipped into a full-time position with FCCJ. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them, like Zeke Bryan and the rest of them, they were just, um, I guess it was a transition for them, but it was, a, it was an actual um, application to a full-time position and acceptance by FCCJ for me. So you were in the LN, LPN program at Stanton and mm -hmm. then became in the, came into the RN program. Yeah, I applied and was accepted as a full-time faculty member. So I did not go through that transition precisely like the others did, because they just, it was really, for Elizabeth Cobb and the rest of them, it was mm -hmm. just a transition. I mean, they just moved right into FCCJ from the public school system. Mm -hmm. And I didn't exactly do that, I interviewed Mm -hmm. position, and it wasn't a matter of just accepting me in. I interviewed and was mm -hmm. accepted in the, um, mm -hmm. in the nursing program. Uh, and it was actually the second year of that program's existence that I came on as a full-time faculty. Women out of college started in 60, fall of 66. Mm, well, it started before that, didn't it? Well, uh, the first classes were the fall of 66. Okay. Uh, first class was the fall of 66 mm -hmm. then. I must have, it must have been 67 then that I was, I was a part of FCCJ in 66, but it was with that transition with the practical nursing program. So that's when they brought us over here, I think it was 66. I can confirm that. So if it started in 66, then I was hired in 67 then. Okay. I guess that's the way it is. Whenever this college started, and they brought us out here. They uh, 
classes started Cumberland in the fall of 66 and Flagler Street in the fall of 66. Oh, they did? I thought they started at Flagler. See, well, you know more about that than I do. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. So you're saying you were part of Stanton in uh, 66 and then was officially made a full-time member in early 67? It had to be. It had to be. It had to be. Yeah, that's probably right. 68. Bruce Wilson. Yeah. Isn't that a lovely flower? Isn't that about? Um. <laughs> that's 68. But see, I, 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 well, okay, I was, then maybe it was, uh, do, 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 do. 67. Okay, then that's right. You're right. Because. Yeah. Yeah, because I was still under Joan Ross, but that's when they transferred us out, and I got okay. Okay. So you were officially hired in '67. Yeah, I guess that's right. Would that still make you the first uh, full-time uh, minority? Minority. I'm pretty sure, cause I they didn't have they didn't have a full-time minority in nursing or in the whole school. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I was told the whole school, but then you might want to say in nursing. You might you go ahead and say in nursing. That is accurate for nursing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely accurate for nursing. If you find, Lois, that you were, in fact, the first time, first minority, uh, let me know. And we'd be glad to make that claim. I, I hate to make it. Yeah, don't make it. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. I would not want you to do that because the information came from, um, I think it was Roseanne Hartwell. Okay. Okay. She's retired now. And, uh, she might. She may not even. Remember. I don't know. She Memory's kind of cloud on these things. Yeah. Well, go ahead with that. Okay. Okay. But if you find out, let me know. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll ask the subcommittee to check it, but they had... Uh, it's amazing what when you start digging back in the sixties and yeah, it's, even it's, the early seventies, uh, the records are kind of confusing and it's kind of and some of them don't even exist. Is I that mean. right? Yeah. Well, I yeah. tried to hold on to most of this stuff of mine, and I if mm -hmm. see if I had taken the time to get this done, I could tell you precisely, you know, the dates. But see, all of this is back when I was with when we made that change. I kept all of my 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 records and my papers and everything, so it. 60, 68 then would be the the wise thing to put down. But see, this was in uh, 67. I mean, 67. Uh -huh. yeah. But see, this is my contract for 68. So it must have been 67, 68 that we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, so you stayed uh, as a faculty member in uh, the nursing program, the RN program, until you were promoted to. Uh, uh, Director? Or? Yeah, see, I moved in, in the RN program uh, when we moved to this campus in, in, in the 70s. I was still uh, an instructor. And then I was, um, I moved from an instructor, not by salary, but, but by assignment to coordinator of the, the um, uh, advanced courses in nursing. Um, that was by assignment. And then in 1975, um, I completed, you know, the doctoral degree. Many, many thanks to LCCJ because I was in the initial class with the Nova cluster, with Dr. Bryant and the others. And it was through the staff program development fund that mm -hmm. uh, I was able to complete that program. Staff program. Mm -hmm. we, we were STD uh, funded in part. They didn't, they didn't pay everything, but we were funded in part. 
Yeah, yeah, I remember that first class. Uh, yeah. So we were in the first class. So complete. So when you got your doctorate from Nova, you became then a director. Yes. And when I got my doctorate, I was um, first released from a teaching assignment by Doctor Finch at that time. I believe that's Oliver Finch. Zeke now was provost by '74. Okay. I just finished his interview. That's Dr. I Finch. Zeke was provost in '74. That's what he told me. Okay. Doctor. Oh, Dr. Fish that asked me to write the I thought surely Dr. Fish asked me to complete a proposal to um, expand the nursing program. Hmm. Could okay. you have done that before uh before you finished your doc? Mixed up now, and I thought I had it all together. <laughs> <laughs> well, I when I finished no, it was when I finished my doctorate that I agreed to write the proposal for expanding this program. Expanding the nursing program. Mm -hmm. Expanding the nursing program. See, the community indicated that we were not providing, uh, no, they didn't say we were not. They asked us to provide 250 graduates a year to meet the demands in the local community. And the 250 graduates were supposed to come from Duval and Duval, Nassau, and Flagler County. And we did not have appropriate space to to increase the enrollment at that time, nor appropriate facilities. So I was asked if I would write that, uh, you know, propose, would write that grant and request federal funding. So I did, and I, as I said, I was released from from my teaching responsibilities. So I did indeed write the grant, and uh, the grant was the proposal was accepted by. Uh, you know, the federal uh, governmental person, and it was identified as one of the best that, you know, was submitted. However, it didn't help our situation because they gave out a fund, but was not funded by um, the Fed. Well, um, Admiral Geis, I'm well forgetting, Admiral Geis was working with us. <clears throat> excuse me, with the nursing program because he was real concerned about the health services areas in the local community. So he, Dr. Bryan and myself, flew to Tallahassee to one of the legislative meetings to present this proposal for state funding. And um, we were fortunate. We were funded by the state. So you took the same the same proposal mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, yeah it was revised slightly because it had to be revised to some degree and I made a presentation in Tallahassee I presented the uh, proposal to the legislators and don't ask me who they were because I don't know I just know that Admiral Geis was the political figure at that time because he was um, he was functioning as I guess, I don't know if you call him the lobbyist for this college or what. They had a title for yeah, person in was, political uh, actions at that time. Promoted community development or something. Yeah, well, yeah. anyway, uh, so he knew of what the strategies were and what our assignment should be. So Dr. Bryan and I just went along, and then I had to present it. And uh, during the process of discussion and whatever, was required, we did get funded. 
uh, $3 million. Now that was not the same, was that the same proposal that expanded this building? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's it. Um, and th this was fully state funded then? Yeah, it was not, not federally. Funded. No. Uh, see, we see because we had to, we had to revise it slightly because the federal um, guidelines were slightly different, and there were some things that uh, the the feds uh, required that the state didn't, and uh, so we had to, you know. As a matter of fact, Dr. Bryant could not would not have been in this area had uh, we been funded by uh, the feds because this was not to be office space. All of this area down here where we are now was to be used by the nursing program. So specifically, what what developed in this building? Uh, okay. It, first floor is administrative? Uh, yes, the first floor is, is absolutely administration. And then, of course, we got the 300 seat uh, capacity auditorium. Got a 300. This is important. 300 seat auditorium. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that auditorium was supposed to be a teaching auditorium. Uh, it can be used for that purpose is because if, if you notice the seats, you go in there, you notice the seats there, just like those seats at downtown where the desk comes up over it. Mm -hmm. And but um, it just, it doesn't work that well for teaching. But it was supposed to be a, a combination of uh, an auditorium for activities and teaching. What kind of activities, Lloyd? Um, student activities where you have, you know, performing, I guess, performing arts. Can we just say it has its dual purpose? Yes, you can say that. For teaching and student activities. Right, okay. okay. That's basically what it is. Even though it may not be used that much for teaching. No, it's not. But it, it that's the purpose of it. What else has resulted in that experience? Okay, and the, the um, second floor. Um, resulted in classroom and faculty office space as well as the administrative suite, nursing administrative suite. As well as the uh, nursing administrative suite. I call it that. You, know, you might want to use another title. But what, what is that? What is that exactly? Oh, it's, it, it's that area constitutes the uh, direct an office for the director of nursing and an office for coordinator of uh, non credit. I guess that's not the term we use now. Let's say continuing education uh, courses for nursing, nurse related programs, a spacious conference room, it's spacious. you don't need the seating capacity, do you? No. Okay, so this is beautiful. It's probably by far the best conference room and it was uh, uh, extremely good view on this campus. It really is the best conference room on this campus. Uh, and it also has a work room. See, that's why I see it in uh, administration. It says a work room for, for faculty and administrators and a lounge, all that good thing. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's an office for the director of nursing. Who's that? June Borden? No, <laughs> Barbara Witherspoon. Barbara Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's program manager, so you might not want to say director of nursing. When I was there, well, see, she Barbara Witherspoon. See, when I, when this was structured, it was the, it was for director of nursing, but now you know we don't use that title. Program, program manager. manager. Okay. I'll cross that out. And then you said there's a coordinator up there too. Well, no, the, the, the office. See, when it was when the building was structured, that was the purpose of it. Those two offices, one for the director of nursing and one for coordinator of of um, con ed and nursing related programs. This was con continuing ed. Oh, sorry. continuing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But you see, we see. Would you combine those two into one then? Or? No, we we still got the second office up uh -huh. there, but we use it for computer purposes. You know, uh, um, um, to say a computer office. Yes, right. so that's what we okay. use it for now. Um, Lois, as you you are what dean of uh, nursing, dean assistant of dean of health services program. 
assistant dean, which includes now okay. more than nursing. Right, then. which includes nursing. Don't put nursing first. I'll, see. I'll tell you why in a minute. I um, understand. <laughs> <laughs> Dental. I used to be a minister. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> With my background, I work hard to try to keep this a unified area, you know. So dental, it's dental hygiene, dental assisting. So the health services consists of dental hygiene mm -hmm. and something else dental? Or dental assisting. And dental assisting. Okay. okay. And what else? Emergency medical services. Emergency medical services. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like to capitalize those. Is that it's okay? Is that okay? Yeah, I, I see them a lot of times not capitalized, but I'm I'm capitalizing yeah, I, all programs. Yeah, I think that's, that's fine. Okay. Um. And uh, dental hygiene, um, dental assisting, emergency medical services, medical lab technology. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, now we come to nursing. <laughs> I know you're <laughs> Nursing. Oh, we got another, so you might want to move an and because we got another problem. Nursing, nursing, nur nursing comma, nursing related. And I'll tell you why I say that. Nursing, nursing related uh, services. Related program. Nursing related program. Okay, and let me tell you why I say that. Mm -hmm. Nursing, the, 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 Credit RN is the biggest program, but we also mm -hmm. have a practical nursing program, search tech, medical mm -hmm. assisting, nurse assisting, home health aid, and they're all nursing related programs. So that's that. why I say that. So the nursing is the RN program. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. um, now, can they get an RN? And, and, and uh, respiratory therapy. Oh, yeah. Boy, that's a big area. It is. It's huge. How many faculty do you have? Oh, see, 33, 36, 38, 39, 39 or 40. Well, full time, about 39, I think. So, can we say almost 40? Yes. Yeah. That looks better. Yes. Yeah, okay. Almost 40 full, full -time, time faculty. You need part time. You don't need part time. Well, and okay, I can give you approximate five, um, seven, nine, eight, ten, um, probably fifteen, maybe a little bit more than that, because I got about fifteen in EMS alone. That's probably close to twenty. Uh, about twenty mm -hmm. part time faculty. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, how many students? Do you approximately uh, serve on on a yearly annual basis? Okay, let's see. It's on an annual basis, we get five thousand three hundred. Wait a minute. Twenty-five. All right, take your time. I'm gonna shut this off. Okay. Let's see what it takes. Uh, Lois was talking about that annually. He, uh, uh, she, her whole area serves about. Uh, 452. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When these students graduate, Lois, what what are some job areas that they tend to go to? Okay. They um they can seek employment in the hospital clinic. Area hospitals, mm -hmm. clinic, um, primary, actually, primary care centers. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And they call them primary care. And some refer to them as ambulatory care centers. If you're using both terminology, um, ambulatory is the term. Mm -hmm. Ambulatory care centers. Going to walk in, you know, they change the name now. It's no longer primary care. This is a term that's commonly used, ambulatory care okay. centers. So some right. of them may use primary, but I think if you put ambulatory care, that's probably going to be accepted. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, physician's offices.
public safety department, and I said that because of the emergency medical services. Public safety would include fire, police. Uh, well, basically rescue, fire rescue. Fire rescue, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, industrial nursing, but some of them went to you know industry. Mm -hmm. um, any, uh, do you have any success stories of students that have maybe uh, come back and that are, say, working for the emergency fire rescue or uh, working for St. Vincent's or? We have some. I think probably uh, to start out with, I think it's, it's, uh, it's noteworthy to see that some of the graduates from the FCCJ programs from a career, career ladder concept are now professors at FCCJ, and that's to me an interesting phenomenon. Who, who are some of those? Um, Beulah Williams. Um, Beulah is professor in, in what? In uh, nursing. And interesting enough, these names I'm giving you, I taught these faculty members as students. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. uh, Patricia Stores. How you spell that? P-A-T-R-I-C-I-A-S-T-O-R-E-S. S-T-O-R-E-S. Uh -huh. Stores. Is she professor there? Uh -huh. Sarah McClure. M-C-C-L-U-R-E. And these are these are FCCJ grads now that I'm giving you now. Um, Joyce Fowler, well, she's no longer with the college, but she, she was an FCCJ graduate, and she did indeed work here. She is now at JU. She's doing extremely well, but she was here. Joyce Fowler is now what? Fowler. Joyce Fowler is she is um a professor at JU now. Professor of nursing. Yes. Did you teach her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, taught her too. F O W L E R. Her S Y L E R. Fowler. Her name. It's Joyce Fowler, S Y L E R. S Y. S Y L E R. I'm sorry, S Y L E R. My gosh, I heard that. I got to turn my hearing aid up. <laughs> well, I didn't say it too well. Now. <laughs> no, I miss here a lot. Gladys. Time. No, I don't know these persons. I told and I told these persons at Brewster Duval. So I didn't teach them here. Okay. And three other. I taught about six or seven of the faculty members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So Beulah. Beulah Williams. Uh, Beulah Williams, Patricia Stores, uh, who are now, and Sarah McClure, who are mm -hmm. all now professors of nursing mm -hmm. at uh, FCCJ mm -hmm. Utah. And then, uh, they were graduates of the program. They're graduates of the nursing program, and Joyce Seiler was a graduate of our program. You taught her, and she's now a professor of nursing at JU. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really, mm -hmm. really interesting. And then about three others that I, I uh, taught, and they are now FCCJ faculty, but they I didn't teach them here. I taught them okay. in a program just before I came here. Um, what are these students? Do they ever tell you what were the, some of the stronger points that they learned as nursing students? So you can hear students indicate that, first of all, that the program is a quality program and that, uh, you know, while it was comprehensive in nature, uh, it Provided them with entry level skills and provided them with the incentive and the mechanism to um, pursue further education. And uh, I'll give you a classical example of that. We had um, the Honors Day program in the auditorium two days ago, and the panel was all FCCJ graduates from nursing. And one of the panel members is a vice president at University Hospital, vice president of community services. 
was all FCCJ graduates, mm -hmm. and uh, who now, and one of the panel members. Uh -huh. Elizabeth Mean. What's her name? Elizabeth Mean. Uh, M E A. M E A N S. She's well, she was a graduate uh, of the FCCJ nursing program. Mm -hmm. Was that uh, recently or? Uh, no, she's been uh, she's been away for several years now because she she left here and she completed her baccalaureate and her master's in business administration and she's now vice president. Is now vice president of, of what? Community services at University Hospital. Is she black or? She's black. Mm -hmm. Vice president of community services. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that's just one, that any number, but that one just you know comes to my mind right away because I she can't go up but one step higher in in a hospital setting, and that's president. Yeah. <laughs> so she's done yeah. real well. Do you did you teach her? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. Did he? I have another one that's a success story. Ray Phillips, the white male, and that's that's important because we have so few male students. How do you spell her first name? R A E? Oh, this is a male. Ray. R A Y. Oh, R A Y. Phillips. Two L's or one? Two. Is he a, a, a male nursing student? Yes, he's graduated from this program too. And he is, I'll have to call you his job, but I believe he's the vice president of nursing service at Methodist Hospital. Vice President of Nursing Services at um, Methodist. Mm -hmm. and he's done real well because this is his second job of that nature in the local community. He's also on, he serves on our advisory committee too. I'm not saying. What do you call your, what's the full name of your advisory committee? Uh, the Nursing. Advisory committee. Uh, any success stories in other areas like um, uh, MLT? Right. Yeah, there are some. There are some success stories, and I tell you, Hank Gaglardi is going to send me a written story, so I guess he'll okay, cover that. Okay, it will be covered, and now uh, hopefully uh, Mary Carter will send you one for Med Lab mm -hmm. Tech. Okay. Uh, because I could tell you about the RAMP program, which I think is absolutely fantastic, which is, which brings in military students. And FCCJ uh, was the first in the nation to do that. And I think Mary Carter should give that information to you. While it's under my jurisdiction, she coordinates that program, and she would be in a much better position to point that out, which would go under those things that occurred in the health system. What do you call that? In case I miss her, just to mention that would be important. Um, um, it's the RAMP program, the R-A-M-P, capital R, capital A. -M -P. What's that acronym stand for? That's an MLT, right? That's an MLT. Uh -huh. And I, I want to get that brochure for you, so if you just put a little, little area, so I'll have that thing. Bit of significant history for emergency medical services. All right, bring him down here. We 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 probably are unique in this state because we have we own a rescue unit. The college owns that unit, uh, um, and this is off the record. Uh, <laughs> there's a head, what I consider to be a, a model advisory committee. Uh, that's one of probably one of the most involved and active uh, advisory committees that this institution. Now I don't know. I may be challenged with that. Notice I said. 
probably <laughs> because I don't, you know, I could be challenged by auto mechanics or somebody. Um, we just say it has a model advisory committee. It, and it really does. Yeah. And uh, the, the, now that information I need to get from Jim, but the chairperson, no, the medical director for that committee has personally uh, donated funds for scholarship, and it's in the thousands, I think it's, and again, I don't want to be quoted because I don't, I don't know if that's important that you have the amount of money or not. If it is, I can get that. No, just okay. say personally donated substantial funds. Yes, uh, for scholarship. Who is that? Girl? Dr. Sharp and I. Sharp, S-H-A-R-P. I would have to get her first name. Is she full-time? No, she's a medical director. That's on a volunteer basis. She is not paid. She's not salaried yet. So this whole committee is volunteer. Yeah, that's volunteer. Okay. Lois, it's a little after eleven. As we kind of wind up here, can you? Uh, are there any uh, substantial? problems that in your whole area that you're trying to overcome that uh, let's let's maybe take one major problem that you're maybe working on um, mm -hmm. I hate to say it but I you know I can obviously say it uh, it's um, I guess recruitment and and retention of minority students uh, I would consider it to be a problem because we feel that we, we need, you know, to recruit and retain more minority students. And we're in the process of, well, we have recently submitted one facet of the Title III grant. I know you've heard about that Title III grant uh, that will address uh, a decelerated curriculum to enhance. Uh, the, the student success rate and submitted a Title III grant to do what now? To uh, it, it really is not a Title III grant. We submitted a phase of it because see there there um, several phase phases uh, or several components of the Title III grant. But one component is to um, address a decelerated curriculum, which will enhance student success uh, in the. You mean address a curriculum or actually develop a curriculum? Well, we're probably going to develop, you know, in file analysis, we're going to develop. What do you mean by decelerated curriculum? Uh, Goes at a slower pace? Slower pace, you know, to uh -huh. sort of pace it. Uh, hopefully we can, you know, right now we, we would like to deal with um, a systems approach, you know, where you allow students the opportunity to, to, to be paced. But you know we locked into the semester system, and so you know it's it's difficult to do. But if we can structure a decelerated curriculum where these students may take a little bit longer, you know, than the average student, then the success rate will increase. Okay. We don't have it detailed or developed yet, but that's that's the concept. Well, why is black enrollment nationally falling? Do uh, you have any insights on that? Uh, Brenda gave me some insights. Uh, I didn't ask Zeke about it. Uh, I think it's a concern of all of us. It is. I'm not sure I can supply you with the answer to that. I, I know we need to probably more actively recruit them, you know, and I guess maybe we need to to. maybe address to a greater degree the misnomer and, and, and the, the um, erroneous concept that some minority students have. I, I think we've probably spoken or alluded to it, but I'm not sure that we have uh, gotten the message to the students. You know, some of the students at one point in time had um, what I would consider misconception about being successful in the program, you know, 
if you get in the program, you're not going to be successful on it. Uh, if you even attempt to complete, and I'm going to use health services programs as, as my example, because I don't know about the others, mm -hmm. uh, that is so difficult that you will not be able to succeed. That's been one misnomer. Now, I don't know. I don't know if that's a national. The students think it's too difficult. They come in the program. Yeah, I think that that's been a concept, and I'm not sure that that's that's the only problem. That's one. And I'm not sure that they have a strong foundation in secondary education. You told me to make that clear. I don't know if you better put that in there. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Are you off? No, I'm still off. <laughs> I'm a burn at the end of this tape. That's why I keep looking at it. Okay. Um, but off the record, Bob, can I talk to you about that a minute? Sure. It's just